you may not realize it, but we have been always swimming since the time we were born. Why? Because air is a fluid just like water, but with less resistance since it has less density. Let's talk more about air, but first remember what you have learned so far. In chapter 3, you learn about the atmosphere structure and composition and air pressure. In chapter 5, we study how the five reasons for seasons create surface temperature pattern and how they change during the year. In any given place on Earth's surface, the combination of gases, constant and variable, and temperature result in the differential atmospheric pressure. In this chapter, we will discuss the atmosphere and oceanic circulation. Our learning goals are Define air pressure and the instruments used to measure it. Explain the atmosphere driving forces and how they affect wind speed and direction. Understand the high and low pressure flow in both hemispheres. Explain local wind such as sea land breeze, valley mountain. Interpret basic patterns of the atmospheric circulation and ocean currents. And finally, understand the El Niño and La Niña sound oscillation and its global impact and weather and climate. Books on meteorology often describe Earth's atmosphere as a huge ocean of air in which we all live. The diagram shows our home planet as being surrounded by a great sea of atmosphere a few hundred miles high, divided into se several different layers. And yet, that part of our atmosphere that sustains all life that we know of it is, in reality, especially thin and extend upward only about 18,000 feet, or just over 3 miles. And the part of our atmosphere that can actually be measured with some degree of accuracy goes up about 25 miles, or 40 kilometers. Beyond that, to give a precise answer as to where the atmosphere ultimately ends is almost impossible. Somewhere between 200 and 300 miles comes in the determined region where the air gradually thins and ultimately merges into the vacuum of space. So the layer of air that surrounds our atmosphere is not so huge at all. As the late Eric Sloan, a popular authority in weather so eloquent, put it, Earth does not hang in a sea of air, it hangs in a sea of space and has an extremely thin, thin coat of gas at its surface. So how do you measure the atmosphere weight? A barometer is a scientific instrument used to measure atmospheric pressure. That's used the barometer. The most common one, the mercury barometer, is the, also the oldest type of barometer, invented by the Italian physicist Evangelista Torricelli in 1643. Torricelli conducted his first barometric experiments using a tube of water. Water is relatively light in weight, so a very tight tube with a large amount of water had to be used in order to compensate for the heavier weight of the atmospheric pressure. Torricelli's water barometer was more than 10 meters, 35 feet in high, which rose above the roof of his home. This odd device caused suspicions among Torricelli's neighbors, who thought he was involved in witchcraft. In order to keep his experiment more secretive, Torricelli deduced that he could create a much smaller barometer using mercury, a silvery liquid that wakes 14 times as much as water. So a mercury barometer has a glass tube that's closed in the top and open in the bottom. And the bottom of the tube is a pool of mercury. The mercury sits in a circular, shallow dish surround the tube. The mer mercury in the tube will adjust itself to match the atmospheric pressure above the dish. As the pressure increases, it forces the mercury up to the tube. The tube is marked with a series of measurements that track the number of atmospheres or bars. 
observers can tell what the pressure is by looking at where the mercury stops in the barometer. Another type of barometer is called aneroid barometer. It was invented in 1844 by the French scientist Lucien Vidi. An aneroid barometer has a seal metal chamber that expands and contracts depending on the atmospheric pressure around it. Mechanical tools measure how much the chamber expands or contracts. These measurements are aligned with the atmospheres or bars. So the aneroid barometer has the circular display that indicates pressures, number of the atmosphere, much like a clock. One hand moves clockwise or clock counterclockwise to point out the current number of atmospheres. The terms stormy, rain, change, fair and dry are often written above the numbers of the dial face to make it easier for people to interpret the weather. Aneroid barometer slowly replaces mercury barometers because they are easier to use, cheaper to buy, and easier to transport since they had no leak that could spill. Wind is moving air and is caused by differences in air pressure within our atmosphere. Air under high pressure moves toward areas of low pressure. The greater the difference in pressure, the faster the air flows. So in 1934, on the roof of the little wooden building atop Mount Washington in New Hampshire, an instrument to measure wind speed called an anemometer made history. It recorded a wind speed of 231 miles per hour during a huge spring storm, the fastest wind gust ever recorded with the instrument. More recently, sophisticated Doppler radar has been used to measure winds, recording a wind speed of 318 miles per hour in the Oklahoma tornado in 1999. That's faster than the top speeds of Japanese bullet train and over three times quicker than the fastest baseball pitch. So wind is described with direction and speed. The direction of the wind is expressed as the direction from which the wind is blowing. For example, easterly winds blow from east to west, while westerly winds blow from west to east. Winds have different levels of speed such as a breeze and gale, depend how fast they blow. Wind speeds are based on description of winds in a scale called the Beaufort scale, which divides wind speed into 12 different categories, from less than 1 mile per hour to more than 73 miles per hour.